Well, now I want to focus on just a, a few elements of uh, the beginning verses of chapter 18 as the divine messengers reveal the promise of the coming son, uh, Isaac. So we have the language, Vayira, beginning of chapter 18, verse 1. Elav Adonai, Be Elah. Elo nay, excuse me, Mamre, so that now God appears again, uh, and he is Abraham is enabled to see. So one of the things to note in verses one and two uh, is, and, and other places throughout Scripture is the use of this verb ra'a. Uh, the first, the vaye ra, is a nifal form, imperfect, third masculine singular, uh, that. God appeared to him, namely to Abraham, by the Elone, the oaks of Mamre. So he's down again in the southern portions of uh, the land of Canaan. Uh, Mamre, we remember, uh, is near Hebron, uh, which is about midway between Jerusalem and Beersheba. Uh, Beersheba fully down in the, in the biblical Negev, the southern region. And uh, again, that uh, Abraham is just kind of there hanging around, and, and what is he doing? He is Yoshev, he is sitting by the uh, Petak Ha'ohel, oh by the entrance to his uh, tent in the heat of the day. Uh, one of the fascinating things is, to, is always look at uh, aspect, you know, it's not necessary to the text to talk about the fact that this was the middle of the day, but it sets up a, a, a kind of time setting. The heat of the day would be typically uh, early afternoon, uh, typically between like the, say, 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, when one might typically in the Middle East be taking, as they say in Mexico, a siesta, taking a nap, a rest time. Uh, so here's the circumstances set up. He's kind of, you know, sitting. He's resting near the entrance to his tent as it's in the heat of the day. So he's probably in that uh, covered tent flap entrance area, uh, trying to stay out of the, the heat of this uh, particular day. We're not told the season, but it is hot, home, uh, Arabic ham, <laughs> uh, or sometimes uh, it's described as hama, uh, very, very warm. And uh, but again, the other part is that it presents the very, very real setting of the Bible. So it's you know it's like when we had the, the discussion about the uh, the birds of prey that come down when at, the animals have been cut open in chapter fifteen. Uh, this is a normal kind of everyday occurrence. You leave animal you know dead animals out in the in the open, and birds of prey carry on uh, come to eat them. Uh, but here he's in the heat of the day, and as as he is uh, resting by the entrance to his tent, he lifts up his eyes, Vayasa Ena, and then the cow form of Ra'a, Vayar, and it is repeated in the second line of this. So there's an interesting phasing of, of the verbs uh, through verse 2. He lifts up his eyes, he sees, what does he see? He sees three men. Behold, three men, Nitzavim, sitting, a, a, a Nifal partisan. They're sitting, or I mean, excuse me, standing. <laughs> Abraham was sitting. He sees them standing uh, in front of him, facing him. Sometimes the preposition all can mean a variety. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't translate it that they were standing over him. So it's possible, you might see the perspective, if he is sitting and they're standing uh, over him, but opposite him. So he, uh, he, uh, he comes face to face with the approach of these three men. And what does he do? He sees, he runs, and he meets them as he goes away from 
So there's a there's a distance between them. So they're not literally standing over him because then the, this second line doesn't make sense. But the use twice of Vayar and then Vayarats, uh, again, the Kalan perfect that he run to greet them, to meet them. And, and again, the verb kara is a, the interesting verb because it it can mean to read, R-E-A-D, like you read a book. Uh, but it all depends upon the suffixes, whether pronominal suffixes or sometimes a, a, a object of the verb introduced by a laman as compared to so kara le versus kara al and other verbs uh, changes the meaning of the the, the essential nature of the verb kara. But here, Abraham, as uh, your commentaries emphasize, is the model of hospitality. Again, uh, those of you, if you had a chance to uh, visit the Middle East, and particularly among varieties of family, the, uh, the honorific uh, attitude and display of hospitality is a very important part of the culture. So Abraham now is portrayed as uh, even in the midst of the heat of the day, he'll get up and run out to greet visitors. And then what does he do? What's fascinating here, he lifts up. So you have this upward look. He sees, he runs in order to meet them. They are standing opposite to him. And what does he do? Yishtachu. By Yishtachu Artsah. He bows down, and again, that comet's hay on the end, that directional hay, he bows down to the ground. Now, this uh, vayishtak is a very uh, fascinating word. There are two very, very close Hebrew roots that have similar meaning, and one of the important parts in this uh, discernment of, of meaning and also uh, the, the mechanical process of parsing verbs is uh, is very important. So this particular form, vayishtahu, is a hithpael. And I remember in the hithpael, a verb that begins with the, a shin or a similar, what we call sibilant, shibilant, a, uh, uh, a, a, an aspirated dental consonant. Sibilant or shibilant, the tav switches places with the s or sh shin vowel. I mean consonant, the shin consonant. So it's instead of yitshika, it is yishtaka. It's easier to say. And so the verb root is shaka. And of course, as so, so many verbs that end in a hay, the hay drops off, and then uh, you have the uh, the added suffix in it, that he bows down uh, before them uh, to the ground. There is a second very similar Hebrew word that would be, uh, you would add a vav. So instead of yishtaku, there is the verb that the root is chava, that is uh, found ver much more often in the Hebrew Bible than shacha, uh, though uh, there there were earlier grammars and uh, dictionaries and lexicons that mislabeled or misparsed uh, the verb chava, but it's in a very unique form, the hishtafel. Now, you may or may not in your Hebrew grammar or even in your intermediate grammar uh, had exposure to the hishtafel form. It is a like a combination of the hithpael, but with an added shin. In uh, Aramaic and other uh, Northwest Semitic languages, uh, a shin prefix to a verb is very much like the hey prefix of the hithil. Uh, as a matter of fact, in, in Aramaic, you have three, what you might call equivalences to the hithil. One is the shafel, a simple shin prefix. One is the hafel with a hay. And a third is an afel with an aleph. And they're all pointed. That is, the vowel pointings are the same, but you have three different forms. But the verb chava 
which also means to bow down, to fall prostrate before, is a very honorific context, as is shaka in our present uh, context. Uh, but the hishtafel form of kava uh, is probably the most often used for bowing down, which involves paying worshipful homage or paying honor or worship to a, an individual or to God of, of uh, you know, a, uh, an honor, honorific position. And so the verb kava in the hishtafel is very fascinating. It is the only word in the Hebrew Bible that takes on this prefixed form of the hishtafel. There are no other hishtafels in the Hebrew Bible but the verb kava. Now, just to tell you the only way that you know the difference between the root kava and the root shacha is if there is a vav which is consonantal, a vav consonant is going to mean that you have a chava form rather than a shakha form. Now, um, we stop. Yes. <laughs>